and this is the lab. I'll leave it to you to do yep. the lab. So the lab is an hands-on thing, and we are going to give you guys some time to try it on your laptops and try to do it. Yeah, we, we can let you five minutes to, to try and see if you can do something with the lab. Uh, the goal is to do uh, this. So basically it's displaying five images here. And uh, you can see that you, you can move vertically. So what are you going to use? Obviously. Uh, uh, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. <laughs> it's obviously flicker. No, no, we are just we have only five items. Right. So the number of items, the number of images are static. So we are just using a flickable here. And inside the flickable, we are putting the five images. This is more. And if you have time, you can look at the scroll bar. And try to do it. And try to do it. So uh, we would like you to, to take five minutes to try it. Uh, if you don't have a computer, you can uh, try to find someone with a computer. Um, we, we will be happy to answer any question you have during those five minutes. So you, you start with this. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Which is basically nothing. <laughs> Has anybody finished the example? Many, I saw many people running the application and they run it directly to the simulator, like a Mego simulator or an I. Oh. Can you maybe tell them how to switch to the... You do it. No, you do it, because okay. you know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in projects, uh, sometimes you might have the problem that in the cute version, can, can, can you see? Maybe you can zoom here. Yeah. Okay, I'll zoom in. So you go here, you press projects, and here the cute version you achieve something that sounds desktopish. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. This is Honestly, uh, most of these things are completely alien to me, and still, I'm, I, I've been able to produce an application for a phone, compile it, deploy it there, and everything. So it's not that hard. It, yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be, because I it, made it. If you, if you look at the choice, you have something named simulator. And uh, that's if you open the cute version. The, the cute version. Yes. If I, if I, yes. Yeah. So if you are using the, if you are using the simulator, you you have something like this. Yeah, and it, and the result will be. <laughs> so you probably saw something like this, right? Some of you. And not very nice. So all you do again, go here and choose something that is 4.7. It's okay. And there you have it. Nothing on screen. Fix that. <laughs> Let's do it together, and you can follow follow me on your computer. Uh, maybe I should execute the. So we we want the the thing on the right, and we have nothing. So we start by adding the background image. background. 
And as you can see, as you type, you have completion for everything, which is really nice in Qt Creator. Uh, where is the slash? Portuguese keyboard. And uh, yeah, I probably have to uncurl it. Uh, I would hope not. So. Yeah, that's interesting. That's what I would do. I want the, ba the background image to take the whole size of my application, so I use encores.fill. He is a designer. When he yeah. see, when, when he's I'm so saying that, when I'm saying that, I'm all, I'm already saying, yeah, the image will be scaled and will be all messed up and not pixel perfect and blurred and everything because scaling sucks most of the time. Any type of scaling uh, and. Yeah, that's why you, you can see the, the image is now being scaled. Yo, yes, it is. Yes, now, now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't like that. Remove that. Just make so, sure it's perfect. So what would probably happen is that your designer will create a background image which is the size of your, of your device and you don't have to resize the image. Yeah, they they, they yeah. live in a world of unicorn and pink, <laughs> pink unicorn and everything, and, and pixel perfection. Pixel perfect. Um, yeah, this is actual advice. Uh, do not change. Um, uh, the, the idea is that the, the, if everything works, designers will be able to create code. Do not change these, these things. If it has visual impact, do not change them without, or if you change them, make sure you're not changing how it looks because that is most of the problems. Even if the designer made, made it in a way that it's really ugly in terms of the code, talk to him and say, and, and this is the cool part, he will get it now. Like if he's done that, he, he, he has touched the code and say, why don't you do it like this and start talking? But now you're all talking the same language. You will understand now. But don't change the view. Never do that. So after that, what we do is to create a flickable. So the, the flickable will, con will contain all the images. And uh, here, I want the flickable to take the whole size of my, uh, of my app. So I'm going here to use the encores.fill parent. That's okay. Okay, then now, now I'll let you do. <laughs> and then inside the Flickable, I'm going to create the five images. Right. Now, uh, sorry, two, three. And now, to position the, the images, I, I have two different ways to do this. Either I use encores, so I say the second images is on the right of the first one, etc., etc. Or here I have five images, those are static images, so I can use static position. So I, I can just say that this one is at position uh, 10, 10. Uh, this one is at position uh, 10 and uh, I don't know, maybe 140. Use it's bindings. Yeah, I can use binding. <laughs> uh, it depends on the size of the application. So you, you position the different images or, inside or the Can I show something? We, we, I think we, we won't have time to finish the lab, but designers will do it like this. <laughs> and actually, it's pretty neat because you notice it has a system for. Uh, yeah, can, can you see the, 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 the line, the horizontal lines, the horizontal lines, and, the lines and, uh, and it helps you position things. That's pretty cool. That's uh, alignment is the key to beauty. Order is the key to beauty. <laughs> so done. And. <laughs> Okay. 
And as you can see, so you have already the background, the clickable, the, the images, but nothing is moving. Why? Because we are missing the content. We need to define the size of the content inside the clickable. And to do this, we just say content height is three times. Where is the three? Okay, three times. So I need I I need an ID here. Three times the image height plus plus something, right? Some margins. Okay. And uh, yeah, content width is two times image width plus some margin. Oh, sorry. And here you have something moving. So as you can see, it was really easy to position the element, especially uh, with, uh, with a designer. And then you just define the content width and height inside your clickable, and you have something which is able of moving. Uh, I think we will stop for now. Um, and finish this after lunch? Fi finish this after lunch. We will show you how to, to put the scroll bar. And to fix the, the flickability yeah. is already going both ways. And fix my code. <laughs> Um, if you have any question, just come and ask us. Okay. Enjoy the lunch. So let's start again. I hope you enjoy your you enjoyed your lunch. You didn't eat too much. I hope. Uh, let's finish the example we were doing. So what did we have just before lunch? We, we had the, flicky, uh, the five pictures and the flickable here. What's missing? The scroll bar. To do the scroll bar, we, we have um, also we have images coming from our designer. So we are going to use it. We have one image for the, the, the slide and one image for the, no, the little thing here. So let's create an, an image. Oh, maybe I should do it as a designer would do it. <laughs> but I'm really bad. So, what you do is to create an image and put it here, and then you can choose the, the source of your image on the right. And it's okay. And what do I do now? The thing is that, see, you have a position and you have a I th and with defined, so better delete this. Yeah, okay. So I'm really not a designer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to, to use some, uh, some code here. So that's the, the background for, for our scroll bar, and we want the scroll bar to be on the right of our screen, so what we do is to create an anchor on the right of the parent. So we just say that the uh, the right of my scroll bar is on the right of the parent. And the vertical position, so the center of my scroll bar, is center 
inside the parent. So we do the same. Uh, my vertical center is the parent vertical center. And finally, we can add some margin on the right. To, so it's, it, it's a little bit more beautiful. So, okay. I do what I can. <laughs> and fail at it. And fail, yeah, okay. Thanks way too much. See? See, I told you it was way too much. So you can see on the on the right here you can you can see a fine line, it's my scroll bar, and now I just had to add the knob, the knob inside the, the scroll bar, a little thingy, and it's also an image. And see how I, I'm structure my file, so the scroll bar is the parent of the, the knob. So uh, I'm using nested elements here. So I give it an ID, then the source. Uh, image. No. The no. The. Um, the width of my knob is the width of the scroll bar. Don't so, change. Don't change. Oh, but I don't. <laughs> you don't change. Just <laughs> center it, because the designer sent it perfectly to you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so I just center the, the, the knob inside my slider. And that's it. Yeah, horizontal center. OK. Oh. oh, yes, sorry. Oh, OK. Sorry. And you can see here you have the knob. And the last thing I have to do is to put a mouse area so I can drag the thing in the slider. Question for you. Yeah, just stop me if you have any question on the on the code here. Just stop me. So the mouse area is going to take the whole size of the node. On course dot fill parent, and I'm going to use the drag thing we we've seen so far. So we are moving on the, on the y <laughs> axis. So the minimum y is 0. The maximum y is, in your opinion, you are developers. You should know. Come on. Yes? Background height minus the number. Background? Background is OK. It's the same size. Yeah. I, I would use scroll bar, but okay. So it's scroll bar i minus the the knob height, and finally you need to say that the target of your drag is the knob. Let's see. Oh, I have a mouse here. Yeah. See, now you can move the knob inside the slider, but it doesn't do anything. So the last thing we have to do is to connect the two together. And to do this, we are going to use a handler. So whenever the position is changing, I'm going to change the x of my flickable area. The, sorry, the y. Sorry, the y of my flickable area. So what do I, I do is on position change, flickable dot 
content y. Uh, I'm going to put it on another line. Equal. And now goes the map. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Uh, if I remember. Minus, no, that's not it. Uh, by, no. And I have to divide by something. It's. Is it something like this? Should be. Okay, let's see. It works. And it works. Wow. Um, so it's it's less than one hundred lines of code. And Imagine how many lines of code you would need to do this in C++. If you wish. What about the other direction? If I use the quick mode, it's just the code work. Um, you just recreate the new scroll bar for the other direction, and you basically copy the code and paste. And yeah. It's mostly the same thing. The Y becomes a X. And no, I was just talking about if I lose the clickable with the mouse. How it, Ah, is it working both ways? Oh. Good question. Yeah, you, you can certainly do this by creating, a, yeah, by creating a binding between the knob uh, position and the flickable position. Uh, should be something like... <laughs> I, I need to revert the, 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 the math here, in fact. So, which means... And then I have another question. But I think it, it, it shows that um, it's not too complicated. It's somehow fun to do and to try because uh, I've done this, and I'm just going to ask him a question that we haven't prepared, see how we'll do that. Uh, but it's fun to play with it, and it's not terribly hard. Please? Sorry? Uh, you will end up doing binding loops all over the place. Sometimes they are bad, sometimes they are not that good. Yeah, the, the, the question was, uh, is there a, a loop in the binding here? Because you, you can see that here, y is bound, is bound to flickable content y. And here, flickable content y is bound to, to the y. So if it's a loop, it will warn you when you press thing. No, but there's no warning. No? <laughs> For bindings? No, or? there's no warning. Why? Because um, uh, the two are, are synchronized. So when, whenever I recompute the Y, the value is not changed. So it doesn't emit, it doesn't emit change the, the value. I think in this case, this is more a case of, of uh, bindings, uh, we call it. Um, the problem with uh, concurrent bindings, because right. this drag, this drag basically creates a alias uh, thing. Because in reality, the y. See no, the, the the thing is, whenever you you change this, okay, what you do is to recompute the the y of the knob, okay, but whenever you change the y here, normally you recompute this. But when you do this, the value is the same. So there's no infinite loop here. We just stop because there's no changes. 
Another question? Do you need the event end, or could you just use the property of the critical content y define it as using the event where you? So, so, so we, where? The content y. Yes. Could you just define it in the critical the same way you do it here in the event end, or do you need the event Yes, yes. I, 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 I could remove this and use a binding on the flickable like I did here. So in QML, you have different ways to do this, like in C++, which is fun. <laughs> because every developer has his own way to do things. So. Any other question? I have one. How do you make that? Uh, that's not a proper scroll bar. Scroll bars. Um, uh, mimic the size of the item. They grow and they shrink according to the size of the item. How do you do that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would do something like this, but it doesn't. No, because you're going to scale it in a non kosher way. <laughs> Border image. Yeah. You just state that you don't use the image, you change image to border image. Oh, okay. And now it will scale properly. And you declare a top and a, and a bottom and some pixels for that. And then, okay, oh. the source is, okay, just replace the, the, yeah. Okay, now we don't need right or left or left. It's zero, it's the same. Okay. Yeah, or you could, Simply remove it. It's the same thing. Five is f five is fine, and now we specify height. And the height is. Uh, it's the content width divided by that. Uh, divided by. Something like this. And that would be a number very small. Oh. You have to multiply it now by the size of the score bar. Uh, mm. No, big. that's not it. It's the other way around, I think. It's the other way around. Uh, which one is the yeah, biggest? It, yeah, yeah. It's and now it will work. Okay, see, this is now really fun because this is a complete scroll bar and if you have content that changes its size, you have now a complete scroll bar with most of the interaction you expect from a scroll bar and even the... Does it change? No. It will change if it's done properly. Yeah. <laughs> no, because it's flickable and flickable. You're using flickable in the scroll bar. So it won't change. If you, for example, were using uh, this in, instead of scroll bar, the size of your canvas, oh, yes. it would change. Yeah, OK, of course. Uh, OK, so. So that, that's it for this example. Uh, less than 100 of lines of code. And you can see that uh, a designer can do it. He was basically saying what I should type. Oh, really? <laughs> no, really, it, I, it can do. It's not too complex. The only thing that helps a bit if a designer like me wants to play with it, it's knowing a little bit of math. Math helps a bit. Uh, a warning about myself, I'm originally a civil engineer, so <laughs> <laughs> ended up in this yeah. but weird. The, the thing is, as you can see, we, we did this together and we were talking the same language. So that's, that's really important. Yeah, because if you sit a uh, designer next to a developer and play with it and see the, 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 the moments where I stopped him from doing things that he would normally do, because I know it, what's going to happen now. I, he was going to like scale the image and, and the, the, the corners, the very nicely done corners, round corners that I did, now are going to get stretched and ugly looking and pixel and perfect. And yeah, a uh, designer next to him will tell them about this thing. So everybody's talking the same language. It's all Portuguese. Okay. 
Okay, Article 2.